Greetings, sir and sirettes, and welcome back to Nimbatus with me, Lathrix. And of course, welcome back to a brand new video in the same galaxy where today, once again, similar to the last video, I'm recording this when normally I wouldn't be recording because I have an idea. A very simple idea because, well, quite frankly, we have explosives to play with. So, let's get started. Today, I want to make a drone which will destroy an entire world, or at least the top layer of crust on the entire world, by dropping bombs everywhere. So essentially, what we need is a drone which automatically goes around the world, dropping bombs ready for us to press the detonate button. We could also make the bombs set up with sensors so they go off as soon as they're near things, but I would rather just set up bombs everywhere, because that is the most fun thing to do. So first of all, Actually, what we can do is save and exit that, uh, delete that, you know, that thing I just made. You duplicate, since I do want the basic starter drone still intact. Remove this, goodbye, and then we're going to make a brand new drone from here. So all we need is fuel for this, so I will put fuel in its core. There we are. And I will also need a... there we are, so we can have the altitude checked. I don't know, um... What altitude do I want this set at? Let's say 200,000! That's what I wanted, no, 200. Tolerance, zero. If you're higher... I said 200, what did I just do there? 200, thank you. Is 100 max? Oh, it's altitude percentage! That makes sense. Okay, then I don't have a clue where that should be. Well, for now, let's say 20%. I don't know. We'll figure that bit out later. That This way, we can control thrusters, which will only send up our drone if we are within a certain height. So then we're just going to have these two little things here and here. Uh, sure, that'll be the middle. In fact, no, that's going to be really annoying. So instead, we're going to be equally annoying. And then this will have a factory all by itself. Oh, isn't that cute? So, if it's too high up, press 1. Too high down, press 2. In fact, do you really care if it goes down? As long as it just floats by itself with the gravity. Uh, sure, for now, if it's too low, we're pressing 2. So these two will activate on 2. There we go. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Now, all of these, I want to be on the exact same button because they can activate themselves. So this will be 555. Five, five. Essentially meaning every time this factory is ready to create something, it will instantly create that item. And, of course, what we are creating is... Ta-da! This lovely little bit of TNT. Now, that should work by itself now, right? Yep, it is indeed out dropping the TNT. Over and over and over again. Fantastic. Oh, this is the non-censored version. I was wondering why we just smashed into the top there and almost killed ourselves. Oh, that's fantastic, isn't it? Okay, so next up, we need this thing to be able to actually go across the world, and we also want it to be able to see where it is going in terms of staying flat. Uh, there we are. As you can probably tell, I don't have much time today, so I'm a little bit rushy when it comes to building this. I just want to make sure this works. Do not need that much speed, thank you. So let's put that there for a second. Sadly, with center of mass, it's only going to work for the entire structure, so I don't know where the center of mass here is. I guess doing this makes it a bit flatter. Then we just put this on the side there, which makes it look like a really weird dog. Anyway, continuing on with that mental image in place. Um, where it, There it is. Okay, just a couple of these, and these will control the usual gubbins. So, tilted right, numpad, numpad... Numpad. Numpad, I think that's correct. I'll test it out in a second. Nope, that is not correct. I did not pay enough attention there, so that's my bad. Now it is correct. So now in theory, once we release this, this should instantly go around the world, dropping bombs and staying at a certain altitude while staying fairly flat in relation to the planet. The problem is, of course, at this point, we can't follow the drone. We have simply created it. So what I need to do next is make a second drone, which is also able to be reproduced, so that we can follow along with it and see what's going on. So I'll quickly do that, and I'll be right back, because that is going to be things we've made plenty of times before. So in fact, what I'll do is I'll put you out to here. Then I'll put one of you like this. A little skip ahead. Meet Globot, my lovely little drone following along. That seems to be working just fine, and it's staying at this altitude. 
and slowly dropping bombs all over the planet. Now, if this thing has survived, because I haven't added the sensors back yet, yep, these should work just fine, because there's a logic splitter, so they don't interact with each other or anything else, meaning any controls on these are completely separate. So I can just keep on making them over and over and over again. The whole time, they are happily putting down bombs everywhere. Oh, hello! Bombs, save me! Bad idea! Why did I send it to you? You know it's going to be a bad idea for you, right? Ha! Huh. Well, you destroyed a fair bit of it, but not all of it. And that's why I'm keeping it so high up. That wouldn't have happened if Globot here didn't interact with things. But look at them working, though! Which means we have one more thing we desperately need to do. In fact, there's two more things, which I think will be a lot of fun. So with you, hello there, me lovely. What I would like you to do is be on automatic, essentially. There we go. So now every time you're ready to make one of these, you simply will. And I can make an unlimited amount of the glow buds, which are just monitor drones. They have no capability except for following along and occasionally exploding things by pressing the explodey button. So let's go back to the planet. Let's just allow it to run for a short while and let's see the carnage first hand. Now the problem is, I'm not sure if the bombs count as a drone to the enemies. Okay, let's see if this has worked. You've survived. Just waiting for you to make a new one. I swear I didn't press anything. Why was there a delay then in your decoupling? Hang on. So it turns out I did press space by mistake the first time. It just so happened to be so well-timed, I thought I didn't. Let's see if it works out, though, after the second one spawns. If not, what we can do is have a little pulse timer. So after we press space, oh, the decouple activates like half a second later and it's put it on a different button because clearly that's meant to work, but for some reason due to timing it isn't. Yep, clearly that's not going to work out. Okay, that's not... A difficult fix. I don't quite know why that's going wrong. If I had more time, I would do a bit of diagnostics now, but I don't really know what's going on there. So, realistically, that should happen. But for some reason, this doesn't. So, I'm going to put this as plus. And what we're going to have is... Where are you? A little while later and everything should be fixed, including a problem I didn't even think about before. So, first of all, we have a buffer gate, which means now when this thing presses space, it actually holds down space for half, well actually a full second before letting go, meaning that it allows the craft to be spawned in, then to be decoupled. The problem was, it turns out you can't decouple something as soon as you print it. It's not as instantaneous as it seems. So, a simple buffer gate and all the problems in the world seem to be solved. On top of this, I forgot by adding the logic splitter here, I was also splitting the TNT. Even after you let go of the TNT, this remains. A few tests proved this when I was getting very confused. So, I've simply added a logic connector to the factory, which means the factory and the TNT both respond to the main body, everything else doesn't. So if nothing else, I'm learning about logic splitters, which is always a good thing. So now, in the test run, this should work. Okay, the first one's created, that's going to go about its business. Then, a second one of you should be made, my little mine layer. My little mine layer, there we go. Good, good, and now the most fun test as I bring this bomb to its neighbour. Are you going to allow me to detonate these TNT? Yes. Yes, you are. fan bloody -tastic. Okay, then. Let's see if we can lay the world with bombs. Now, I'm hoping the enemies don't respond to the bombs by shooting them. On the upside, if they do, there's a good chance they'll be caught in the blast and eventually die from the second or third bombing run, so doesn't really matter. But it will be a little bit annoying. Very rude of them, honestly. There we are. It's so beautiful to see things work when you want them to. Look at my creations go. Sadly, I can't see these on the map. I guess because I don't have the camera section on them. Oh! There's a problem I didn't think about. The explosions are enough to go all the way back to the drone. 
So yes, enemies do shoot them, which means we need to do something about that. Just dropping them less frequently would instantly solve the problem. All I wanted to do was destroy a world, is that so much to ask? Boom! I got one of them. Excuse me, are any of you still dropping bombs? You are, good. So what do we do about that then? Well, what we could do is just bundle loads of them together. That would actively slow down their spawn right without doing anything too complex, but that's no fun. But it kind of is, though, because it's multiple bombs all bundled into one, so it is kind of fun, but still. So there's an issue, then. Enemies are going to be a nuisance. So actually, the best question is, how fast can I spawn these before their detonations chain? Didn't think they would detach from each other. Why would they detach from each other? Oh, whoopsie daisy. There we go, now they're connected to each other. That was very confusing for a second there. They do not want to spawn correctly, do they? Probably because I didn't have gravity on to begin with. So another problem was we actually had the same issue on the drones as we had on the main body in that it wasn't letting go of the original bombs. Which meant it was always holding onto a bomb which then helped to complete the chain and thus kill the drone. This should in theory be more resistant to that. At some point by the way I'm going to make an, just a finished version of this, a huge version which drops loads of bombs everywhere. So that's the distance. That will be the worst. Can that detonate that? Darn, I can still kill the drone. I wish it could drop them further. It's working. I keep hearing combat music, I hear an explosion, I hear dead enemies, and then nothing. So what I could have just done is delayed the signal, essentially once the signal goes off it gets sent to something else which then delays it, sends it back, and that's then a different command. That command allows it to spawn in the bomb. This way they would have enough distance, but why do that when we could just add more bombs to each bomb? It does the same thing, but also is more impressive looking. And so far it's working just fine. Ow, no chain reactions or anything. Hopefully I'll go somewhere safe. So this is from the first drone, so this should be all nice and clear. But if we go behind this... Oh my god, look at it already! <laughs> it's glorious! And here is where the enemies were, which were killing them. And the bombs have killed them instead. I'm dreaming of a bomb Christmas. It's bloody beautiful, that is. Oh, I'm so happy this worked. 2AM engineering at its finest. And technically, the funny thing is, this is an auto-completer for kill hives, because the hives kill themselves by attacking the weapons we're dropping. It's a little bit slow, though. Just making an opposite version of well would literally double this, and making these faster, because we are clearly stacking up too many. Oh, I love the fact there's just another one, and another one. I'm so happy right now. It's the simple things in life, you know? Meanwhile, at an imbattus- oh my god, the lag. Okay, I may need to detonate this first section, because I am now down to 30 FPS, and my controls are actually feeling properly laggy. Please don't destroy everything. Well, oh, I want to see the land, though. Oh, this is going to crash the game, isn't it? You know it's going to crash the game. It's going to be worth it, isn't it, though? Yes, it is, Latherix, it is. Let's go somewhere safe-ish. Oh god, the lag. I want to see the ground. This will kill me otherwise. Go! Uh-oh. What was that? <laughs> so we have just blue-screened the world. Oh, that's better. My frames are back now. How are the drones? The factories seem to be hardier than the rest of the... Yep, the, fact the drones are fine. <laughs> 
We could set them on timers, the bombs, or again with sensors, so as soon as they get to the ground, they auto-detonate. They do seem to fall fl uh, fairly flat. Would that be enough? Yeah, because none of them are doing a full flip, as I don't think they are. And if we put some white on the bottom as well, it would... It should cause it to fall that way. Boom! Yeah, let's try that. Here's an issue. This cannot interact with all the other bomb sections. Otherwise, what will happen is they will all detonate at once. So instead, I need to do this. Uh, kind of want that to go on the bottom as well, then don't we, to increase the weight there. Uh, <clears throat> Thank you. So we have that. All of this is actually attached to the logic splitter. The logic splitter means they won't interact with each other, so I can't manually detonate them anymore, which is a problem. What I could actually, what I could do is have one of the TNT attached before the logic splitter. So we have a block. Yeah, so the TNT returns to being the main block on a different control. Then, this becomes the main block for these ones. And this. Therefore, this won't detonate the others, but I can still manually detonate them. In fact, I'm going to swap that over then to get back to my normal controls. I've already got too many controls going on at the moment because I'm being lazy with the setup. So, if we let you two go... That was odd. Oh, once again, no gravity. Lathrix, turn on gravity. This is why these things aren't working. So once they hit the floor, they should go boom. Then after that, I'll test out if I can do manual explosions. And... Beautiful. And they don't chain react as much as I thought they would either. Lovely. And then manual. Manual. Oh, dear. Oh, I did it wrong, didn't I? You need to be there. Okay. Now, manual is working. Okay. We're done. So, let's try this again in the real world. Sadly, this means I can't carpet bomb everything and just leave them there, which is kind of awesome. That first one always does that. After the first drone, though, that doesn't occur from then on. It's just the first one that's made, since it's already made with the factory preset made as well. This one won't have the factory... Well, it does, but instantly let's go of it. Okay, yeah, fine, that's fine, that's what I meant. Kind of. We could have them homing in. Someone said about that, once we get the homing missiles, we can just let go of little turrets, which just throw homing missiles into the air, and if anything's close by, well, too bad for you. Or in fact, we could just make homing turrets using sensors, since that can turn things, if you want to go a bit complex-like. Well, that bomb exploded long before it hit the floor, sadly. I think I saw something detonate. Ooh, I think I did. Wow, TNT really knocks out resource. I didn't know that. I thought it was like the normal weapons. If you touch that line, you're dead. Yep, there you go. There you go. That is one problem. It does make them more vulnerable to being just touched and that detonate. Okay, it's things behind us. You're being twisted. That's because of enemies, so I don't really count that. And we could have multiple sensors, honestly. Have them facing different ways, but this works. Ha! <laughs> Take that, fella. Oh, will it reach the bottom and hurt you? Yes, it will. Oh, you made it face your hive. And so did you. I love this. Because technically, this will eventually destroy the planet. It just will. Oh, didn't mean to do that. Uh, oh, bombs, help. This time you have those little red lines. You should be helpful to me. Thank you. <laughs> oh, I love the potential of this game. Okay, just so you know, I am having way too much fun, and I have had a grin on my face for the last five minutes, which just has not left. Just because it's automated, that's what I love so much, just automated destruction. Completely morally grey. I'm not doing anything. It's technology being used in ways I would never dream to use it. 
Tut tut, Nimbatus Corporation. Tut tut. And now, we explode ourselves. And then just rebirth ourselves as well. Unlimited lives as well. If, if we made this a tiny fighter drone, we could just make loads of these. Oh, look at that. The splitters seem to be strong enough to survive the bombs. Also, I've got something stuck inside of the drone. There we go. Oh, no. What have you done to me? What have you done to me? What's going on? Why is this one... Oh, I know what's happened. When I exploded last time... Did I... By any chance, leave behind this sensor? Because this sensor's feeding into this drone still. I expected it to be dead. Also, are the bits of um, bomb actually interrupting each other? Can they set off each other? No, it's just the occasional chain reaction. Um, are they? Okay, you. I'm taking you for testing. Can the co Okay, once again, I'm being messed up by the old sensor. Nope, old sensor. Stop, stop. So obviously I need a logic splitter on this drone as well. Yes, they can. I mean, eventually they will die. Hmm, but it is, a, it is actually an issue. That's such a minor issue, though. That's nothing which will be... Yep, look, the old sensor's messing up. Okay, that's the last thing we'll do. After watching that last clip, something occurred to me. We would never see the logic splitters left behind if the bomb reached the ground. It was always destroyed. And yet, we were seeing them in the air. And the reason is manual detonation. As simple as that. And it's all because of how these things connect. If this logic splitter is connected to the original TNT like this, this Logic Splitter here will not die to manual detonation, even if there are lots and lots and lots of bombs. Allow me to demonstrate. Ta-da! We have the Splitter still surviving. However, if we have the Splitter simply attached to one of these instead, still giving the same effect, so this sensor here will not detonate other Logic Splitters, and then we manually detonate, Ta-da! Nothing left as if by magic, and it's all to do with the game mechanics and how the corpses are essentially treated once they're destroyed. So, it's as simple as that. We can still have manually detonating bombs with a sensor which doesn't get triggered by corpses because there will be none, meaning it's both manual and automatic. Huzzah, I can't believe I managed to figure that out in less than five minutes. I am actually kind of proud of myself because I looked at footage and realised, oh, there's a way around this, isn't there? So there we are, there is indeed a way around this. So I'm just going to do this. There you go, you're wearing a really weird party hat. Have fun. And I'll put this... Right, which one's the core block again? There we go. That's the core block, and that's best as well, that being on top. So, happy days. Absolutely no problem. This should now work out as I wanted it to previously. Excellent. After the first bomb, it all works out by itself. If I wish to manually detonate them, I can. Although, if I leave them, they should still work out and not leave behind anything else. Well, I've just invalidated that first test. But this second test... Done. Perfect. It now works flawlessly. And manual detonation. Oh! Maybe not quite so flawlessly, apparently having the TNT so close is going to hurt a few more things, so I just need to rearrange this thing then. <laughs> well, this looks incredibly silly, but it will work. The reason is, the explosions were getting too close. Originally, this worked and didn't kill the main body because it takes a few explosions to kill the factory. But now I've lowered everything, so I have everything I want. The explosions for the first drone were killing this, so if I mistimed the manual detonation, I could easily kill all the drones in orbit. This way, they're not close enough, it'll never cause a problem. And, once again, because how the routing system works, even though this is only being hit by one, in fact, no, it might be hit by multiple, who knows, it dies anyway. And this way we can never kill the drone creating the bombs, it just means we have to have this little 
individual block here. It doesn't really matter too much. It adds one second to the cooldown. It does practically nothing. So, as a finale, I've went ahead, I've allowed everything to start up, and now I'm just going to rest for the next five or so minutes. I'm going to go and get myself a drink, and then we're going to see how much damage it's done to the world, and see if it has indeed worked correctly. Today has been a really good learning experience. Far too early in the morning, though. I just had to watch the first ones land. Straight away taking out a nest. They fall so slowly. And look so odd. Imagine looking up and seeing this. It would be so ominous and so terrifying. Oh, painful. Any one of them going to land directly on that nest? Well, I'll forgive this one a little nudge, maybe it will. Oh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> well, we moved just in the nick of time. I wonder, if I land on one of these, can I kind of just take it for a ride? Sort of, but not really. I'll leave them to their devices. This is a very dangerous spot for the drones, isn't it? Thankfully, they should be able to just bounce their way out of it since they keep on using their boosters whenever they are too low. Once we have more weapons unlocked, we are going to have to do this again, but using a weaponized drone, essentially throwing down grenade launchers. Well, throwing down grenades, not throwing down their grenade launchers. Or maybe they'll simply throw down their grenade launchers, who knows. Get that one. Totally worth it. Thankfully, I have unlimited lives. And my frame rate is now starting to tank. Here's something I didn't think about until just now. The transmitter has defense turrets and enemies, which actually avoid enemies. Oh, that's where the transmitter was? Oh, never mind. Apparently at some point they got overwhelmed. It's a very slow and steady orbital bombardment. There's my corpse! Hello, me. Okay, so we haven't got to the core just yet. Seems like we got close, though. Look at how many bombs are raining down now. Come on, hit a red laser. There we go. Yeah, the frame loss is horrendous. There needs to be a button I can press to stop creating more drones. I mean, that's not actually difficult in the slightest. A simple knot gate with, with a switch attached. But still. No, 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 don't kill me. Don't kill me. Thank you. I wonder what it's like at the core right now. Let's pretend we are a bomb. Hello there, fellow bomb. How are you doing? How are the kids? Okay, I need to get out of here a little bit right now. Oh, the frame rate loss. Oh, it's glorious. Oh, look at that. They all converge into one glorious... Oh, God. Highly explosive entity. That one there. Yep, yep, yep. That's what I was about to say. Well, I think we can safely say we have pretty much destroyed the planet now, haven't we? Also, I'm now on 10 FPS. And more of these are still being made. Oh my god, instantly. The frame rate loss is just horrendous. Oh, the Nimbatus' collector defending this whole section. That's why this bit's alive. This is so really weird to look at. Nope, get off of me. Well, I've got a bomb passenger. That's good. If only I could detonate them one at a time right now. There we go. Nope, nope. Even weapons wouldn't work, though, since they count as friendly, and there is no friendly fire in this game. That is glorious. And I'll detonate the rest, for, for just for the fun of it. There we go. Okay, I'm getting very tired now and my speech is failing me, so I'm going to call the episode here. This was a resounding success. It was rough. It was a bit stupid. Lots of mistakes. But I have really learned so much today, and the future is looking fantastic for some of these designs. And apparently there's a tiny bit of terrain right there. But look at this. There's nothing. There is nothing here. Is that terrain? Nope, it's a gap in the background. There's just nothing left. I didn't realize how well they're done. They have actually destroyed the entire world, haven't they? Except for like small sections over here which were being defended, which are now being destroyed anyway. I guess they're bumping into each other causing that to happen.
I am so happy right now. So with that, if you have enjoyed the video, then of course, likes, favourite, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that Nimbatus is a series you wish to see continued in the future. We will figure out much more efficient, less lag-inducing ways of doing this in the future. But for now, I'm just really happy with the progress and the learning that's been done. Thank you for watching, and goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye.